One of the biggest reasons that creative businesses fail is because they aren't structured and they don't have a systematic way to grow their company. And so even though they might have gotten some success and sales and uh, traction, you know, just doing all the things and putting themselves out there, what ends up happening is eventually they end up backtracking because they don't have the structure internally in their business to actually set themselves up for success. So if you are struggling as a creative to get more traction in your business with your jewelry or your product business, you are going to love today's interview. So make sure that you listen in for the reason why. Hey there, I'm Tracy Matthews. I'm the Chief Visionary Officer of Flourish and Thrive Academy, the host of the Thrive by Design podcast and the author of The Desire Brand Effect. And I help jewelry brands grow their sales to six figures or multiple six figures and beyond using our methodology called The Desired Brand Effect. And my guest on the show today is Joelle Ingwoldson. She is a jewelry designer who has been in the industry for over 25 or 30 years. She shares her story from going from corporate to go to building her startup and the journey that actually got her there. And the, the cool thing about Joelle is that she had a really successful business for a while. And then COVID hit and she had to relearn everything all over again. So you're going to really appreciate how Joelle has navigated the times that we, we are in right now, how she's uh, picked up herself up from the bootstraps and really thrived in her company by creating structure, which we're going to talk about and so much more. So let's dive in to this amazing interview with Joelle from Darshan Sacred Jewelry. You are going to love it. to interview another rock star student of ours, Joelle Ingwoldson Darshan. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> Joel, I wanted I told you in the pre-interview, I wanted to interview you for a very specific reason because Dawn, our one of our DI Plus coaches, you've been working with her and our Diamond Insiders after taking laying the foundation to grow your business and to reach your goals. And she has been just like shouting out like how awesome you've been doing in your business. And so of course I'm like, I have to figure out what she's doing and talk to her. <laughs> so thank you so much for agreeing to be here. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Yay, thanks for asking me, it's fun. <laughs> and please forgive my slightly croaky throat. I'm getting over COVID right now and a little nasally, so. Me too. Um, <laughs> I, like, I feel like the Omicron is like spreading, everyone's getting it, so. Uh, hopefully this wasn't as bad as some of the other variants, but you know, yeah. such is life, you know, life must go on. <laughs> so I want to just tell our listeners a little bit about your business. Tell us about your background. And you said before you have a spiritual name. So let's hear about that. Okay. Well, gosh, about over 25 years ago, I was working in retail and managing a store and a retail clothing store. And my, um, my dad's ex-girlfriend kept pursuing me to, to come and work for her. And back then in the nineties, I was like, okay, I don't want to be granny in the mall, you know? So <laughs> let me just give this a go. And it was a jewelry store. She had a bridal jewelry shop. And so I started working with her and simultaneously, like she was all about growth and transformation and, you know, learning, you know, and so I did some, you know, kind of programs like that. And I started yoga. And when I started yoga, I, you know, I dove right in, like I do everything and met a teacher and he saw my future and he's like, Oh, your name is Darshan. And so that's where the name came from. But anyhow, my background is just, it's, it's in retail clothing. And then it got in, I got into, into jewelry you know, just so tell, because I didn't want to be, didn't want to be granny in the mall. <laughs> That's so funny. Granny in the mall. So Darshan sacred jewelry is the name of your company, correct? Yeah. And so tell us a little bit about like, how did you, you worked in a jewelry store, but how did you kind of get to the point where you wanted to launch your own company? Well, I didn't really know I wanted to launch my own company. You know, I, I worked a lot in different aspects of the jewelry industry from managing a retail store, a bridal store to 
just learning all the back end of manufacturing, designing, connecting with retail customers, learning how to sell, all of that, then growing the sales, excelling in that, and then grow, mm-hmm. developing the sales team. And then from there, I just, I met different people in the industry and I dibble dabbled and tried different aspects of like diamond wholesaling and, and then doing cash and carry shows, um, gift shows around the country, all over for different companies and working downtown. And then I was introduced to Guillermo, who was my old boss from Pomilato. He was the president of Max Mara in the United States. And when he, he developed Max Mara, the clothing company, mm-hmm. and he left there and he got into Pomilato. He's the president of Pomilato. My friends, you know, my friends with all that fashion background and they yeah. knew him and they're like, oh my God, oh my God, you got to connect with Joelle, blah, blah, blah. She's in jewelry now. So then that connection happened. And then I took off even more in my career. That's so great. In, in wholesale, just traveling the world, opening um, and developing the Pomilato in North America, South America, and the Caribbean. And I traveled. So you you were the sales rep for Pomilato. Am I getting that right? You call it like area managers. Okay, yeah. area manager. Okay, great. Yeah, but area managers. It's, it was an Italian company. So we'd go to Italy every year and do the buy the u.s market and you know it and uh you know then i had to open up five million accounts you (laughs) know that's so fun i mean that's a it's such a fun way to go out and be a salesperson when you don't have as much attachment to the the product i feel like it's you're so much more attached to the product when it's your own right um, you know what? I took complete ownership though. You know, yeah. I, I, when I get, if I'm going to put myself out there and connect myself with a brand or with anything, I really have to feel it. And if I feel it, then I take complete ownership from A to Z and I go the extra mile to make sure, you know, my accounts, my accounts would excel. And with the brand, I didn't want my line just to sit there in the case, like, every other brand, yeah. you know, I wanted to really make sure that it was really performing. And so, and I, I dug in, I sunk deep into that career and I loved it for many years until, you know, until I didn't. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. So let, that's a perfect segue until you didn't. So why did you leave corporate? Well, I left, I had a health scare, you know, mm. um, I was traveling a lot and I was just go, 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 go fast paced. And then I had to squeeze in a mammogram and in between my travels. And then they're like, oh, it should be fine. If there's anything, the doctor will call you. And then like an hour later, I they get a phone you. call and I'm like, yeah. And I was like, oh, oh MG. So my world came to a stop and I was kind of in shock because I'd always been very disciplined in yoga and you know, meditation and my health. I don't drink, smoke, or do drugs and just a very clean lifestyle. And so that really shook me. So I knew it wasn't like, this wasn't like a physical thing. It was more like emotional that I had to get in alignment somewhere I was off. Mm. And so part of my healing, my journey was like trying to figure that aspect out. And so I had taken time off from work because of surgeries, blah, blah, blah. And then And in that process, I rediscovered jewelry again on another. another Wow. So did you, so after your health scare, and I'm sorry, and I'm glad you're in recovery now. I'm assuming you're in recovery. Oh yeah. So after your health scare, (laughs) is that when you launched your business or were you just taking some time, continuing to take time off to think through it? Well, I, I started it, but I didn't really know I was starting it. I had just picked up some, you know, things that I had and yeah, I know everybody downtown for manufacturing. Mm. And so I just started putting things together and then, I don't know, I had fun with my new iPhone and I just started taking pictures and I posted of some things and people were buying, they were, they were, Hey, how can I get that? And I was like, Oh, okay. I, this was going on for a while and I didn't notice of it wasn't like a big paycheck okay yeah. it wasn't like what I was making you know it yeah, was just like exactly. you know some extra side money yes you know while I'm healing 
And, and then this healer that I work with, Nicole, who's like phenomenal. You need to start taking note of like, write down every, get it an Excel spreadsheet, whatever. And you're going to see all of those little numbers are going to, are adding up and it's really going to surprise you. And it really did. So then I just started, you know, getting more serious about it. That's so cool. So when was it, when was this? Um, this ago? was like, in 2000, this was about seven years ago is when this happened. Okay. Cool. And so then for the, so my first, um, like I would say three years in, in doing my own little business, I was, it was like the wild, wild West pure excitement. I was out of corporate doing my own thing, making my own money and crushing it and doing really well. But slowly it just started to dwindle because I realized I had no structure Okay. Or foundation to sustain. And I was kind of at a loss. And I really was like, I was, I was bummed, you know, I was like, but I used to do it and I knew how to, you know, and yeah, like thinking back on my, on my, on my career and all that I've accomplished, which was a lot. I was really down on myself and I didn't understand. And I realized that, well, those, you know, companies that I work for, they have a marketing department, they had a, you know, production department, sales department, this department, that department, CFO, dep- you know, blah, 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 blah. And here I'm like, how am I supposed to do it all? <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. And, <laughs> and so, and then I stumbled into, you know, I was like down and out after COVID, you know, that really just took me down. Cause I was always doing like pop-ups. Oh, and- so you were, you built your business kind of on retail pop-ups for many years, like doing yes. like in-person events. And so when yeah. COVID hit, you were hit pretty hard. Yeah, because so I was just, about yeah, that. yeah, yeah, I was doing festivals, yoga festivals and doing, you know, setting up my 10 by 10 tent and selling and traveling a lot. And, you know, but by, you know, after to- more towards like that third year, I was, I was just getting tired, you know, mm-hmm. I, because I didn't have the structure that I needed okay. and I didn't back then I didn't really realize it. But I, my radar was off and I wasn't choosing the right avenues to, okay. to, to make money, you know? And then at some point I, I found, you know, on social media, Flourish and Thrive, you know? Oh, that's awesome. And it kept popping up and it kept, kept popping up. up. <laughs> and it kept popping up. And I was like, it kept popping up. <laughs> I love that. So it kept popping up. <laughs> and I was ignoring it because it's like, because I thought I knew what I was doing, yeah. you know, that's interesting. Of okay. I want to talk about that. The- yeah. I want to talk about that because I think a lot of people <laughs> who've been in business for a while, I mean, clearly you're an experienced business person. You ran a whole, um, area for a jewelry company, you know how to sell. So that's not really a problem, right? Like if you're in person in front of someone, so you find Flourish and Thrive Academy and you probably had an opinion about what it's all about. Maybe like, oh, that's for absolute beginners or whatever, you know, whatever. I don't know. It's, I don't want to put words in your head. What was going through your head? That's I'm just curious. This is more yeah, me absolutely. Because <laughs> yeah. people say that to me all the time. Oh, you're just for beginners. I have people who have half a million dollar businesses who are like now reaching out to me saying like, I need your help because my pricing structure is off or I need, uh, I don't know how to do this because like, I've always done my business this way. So I'm curious what it was for you. Well, I mean, I, I didn't think I needed it because I kind of knew every aspect of the business, but I don't know. At some point it just hit me, my ego, my pride, everything was gone, you know? And I was just like, I was just, there was an opening and I was like, okay. And whatever you were saying in that video or, you know, I was like <laughs> drinking it. <laughs> and so I was like, I, and I just, just couldn't stop thinking about it. And so I told my boyfriend about it and he's just like, okay. And, I, and then I call, I made an appointment and talking to Natasha and she recommended the Lane, the foundation. I was like, okay, I guess I'm not ready for momentum. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm just so grateful though, you know, like super grateful, super duper, duper grateful. Yeah. So I think because it's, it's like, like all of my career. No, continue. What I'm going to say. Oh, no, I was just saying, I'm just grateful because, 
this program has given me a foundation, you know, and structure to grow my business. And I'm tapping into all of my past history, you know, of everything that I've ever done in my career, all those jobs and careers and the titles and all of that. It's like, I'm now I'm able to utilize them again, but with structure in my own company. And I, and I love it. That's so, so great. Happy. So let's just talk specifically, like what were some of the challenges that you were facing in your business um, pre COVID and during COVID, like during the lockdowns of COVID that really prevented you from growing yeah. or that you were kind of experiencing? Yeah. I mean, I had a website, but you know, it wasn't really performing because I didn't put much energy into it ever. Yeah. And I didn't, and I didn't really know how to, excuse me, use it. So that was like a big thing. Like I was like, okay, if I can't travel and people are spending money because mm -hmm. they are that first year of COVID yes. like crazy, you know, everyone's online shopping. And I'm like, I didn't have really, I couldn't access my, my DC because I didn't, I didn't have like, I wasn't set up, you know? And, and by DC, you mean dream client. Yeah. My dream yeah. client. Yeah. We have some lingo over uh, around here that Joelle, <laughs> Joelle's talking about, but outside listeners might not know what that means. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So it was really, you know, it was just really frustrating and, and I was just trying to stay positive and, you know, but it was just, it was, it was hard, you know? And then again, you know, when I found you, the advertisement or the pop-up or whatever it was, you know, I was like super stoked because you guys just spoke right to me, you know, and I didn't even really know what I needed. I was, uh, I was like really flat. I mean, I have like all this knowledge and all this information, but I was like, I was flat. I was defeated. I was humbled. I was like, what is going on? You know, this isn't me. Like I know who I am, but yeah. I did. I wasn't, I wasn't able to tap into those, those, all of those talents that I have, Yeah, you know, for running a business. I mm -hmm. think that it can get really challenging too. And I, I don't know if this resonates with you. It's like, you can do something so well and you're like, I I'm set. But like, as soon as that thing goes away, right? Like your in-person shows, or you want to make a shift, it could almost be detrimental to a business. I remember at the beginning of 2020, like no one could have imagined. I remember like fleeing New York and coming to Arizona and uh, no one could have imagined that the world was gonna be locked down at this point. But I remember in that time, like me even having PTSD from 2008, because when things just like switch so quickly, it can be hard to navigate. So like I, immediately I was like moved into this mode. Okay, like I've been here before, like how can I help people overcome this. And I knew one of the things that is really going to save most brands out there, especially these small businesses who don't have big um, budgets or they can't hire a big marketing team is that they need to learn for themselves how to really build an omni-channel brand. And what I mean by that is like, how can you have money coming in from multiple revenue streams? So if one goes away or, you know, you can't, you know, the, you decide not to do a show this season or whatever, it doesn't actually put your business out. Cause I think that's the most important part of it. Right. Yeah, abs absolutely. I mean, I, I had zero plan when I was in my healing. I things were selling on, on mm -hmm. social media and I thought, okay, great. from there, I ventured off into yoga festivals. I'm like, well, I know how to travel and do yeah. up and trunk shows and things like that, house parties. So I love that. And, um, you know, but I, I wasn't, I didn't have any like long-term vision. I was mm -hmm. just like, it was like the wild west, it's, you know, it wasn't like a, there was no structure, you know, just like went for it. I just jumped in and, and did it. And then, you know, not really, a of, oh yeah. It's not a smart way of doing business is shooting from my hip all the time. It was just, yeah. you know, I need, you need. So if you want it for me, at least, if I want a sustained business, I need to have a full plan laid out. So let's talk about that plan because like you, um, how did you mentioned earlier that your business didn't have a lot of structure 
that you were humbled because you had been successful in business before, but you had a big team around you. I, I'm paraphrasing here, obviously. Yeah. You were confident with sales because that's what you were doing in your previous job. So you had like, in a way, like certain skill sets, but then it was requiring you to hone in on other skill sets. So as a creative, as like, someone who is out there in the world making things happen how did you create the structure for yourself and how did the program help you with that well i listened to i just i listened my zipped it up and i just listened i listened to every module i did the work i got frustrated i was like you know i went through all the emotions i reached out to the coaches and the di and I just listened, you know, if they suggested, I was like, okay. And I just gave it a go. You know, I didn't even question it, whatever resonated. It's like scooping the cream, you know, cause they give yeah. you so much information. You can't take it all in, you know? So I just like scoop the cream, whatever resonated. I'd scoop it, scoop it, implement, scoop, implement. And, you know, working on my year plan now for 2022, like these last few weeks, you know, I'm like in it, you know, yeah. with, with my plan setting. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, years ago, sit, you know, doing these meetings with Pomelato or any of those other companies, it was like grueling, you know, yep. I mean, I did it, but it was like so hardcore, you know, like it was, it was a tough industry, but I, I'm so grateful now because it's like, I'm tapping back into all of that. It's not that you, you guys, you know, laying the foundation just gives us a structure. The DI plus program is like giving that structure of like quarter, you know, quarterly goals and that year goal and then breaking it down into quarters, which is like amazing, you know, and it's really just reeling me back in so I can slow down, sink in and really think like clearly, what do I want? You know, how do I see my company wanting, you know, what's my vision? How do I want it to grow? And, and just taking small, you know, bites and, and plugging it in into those quarters and then, you know, breaking those down again, you know, weekly, like I did those with the, the Monday commitments, mm -hmm. you know, in the DI. Every, yeah. Yeah. In the DI. Yeah. I love those Monday commitments. I always did oh, them, right. you know, yeah. And then if a coach would like just randomly, you know, like, Hey, and they tag a bunch of us, how did, and I'm like, Oh, uh, uh, uh. I, I mean, I really, I was like, you know, they call, I, I felt like I was being called out and it wasn't, it was like, nobody was called. They were, but they weren't, you know? Yep. And so I just had to like step up and it's like, and I remember you would always say on like, I would hear it somewhere. They real business people take their businesses serious. You know, they're not on there. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh my God. Yeah. I'm like, girl. And I would just like check myself, you know, all the time, like this first year into in LTF. And I mean, that's really it. I mean, I did everything you guys suggested, anything the coaches suggested. There was a book club last year and they recommended books. Well, I don't have time to read, but I can listen to it on audible yeah. when I'm working yeah. and I just scoop, 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 you know, I can't absorb and implement everything. I'm just one person because I'm trying to do everything, you know? So I just take a little here. I take a little there, implement, implement, circle back around and add again. And, you know, and then. I want I want to pull that out because I think this is a really important point that you keep saying, scoop the cream, scoop the cream. And the reason why I think this is really important that people listen to it's a program like laying the foundation or being in our mentorship community, the diamond insiders there it's, there's a lot of information to implement and our brains cannot absorb. And it's the same thing with the audiobooks Cause I listen to a ton of audiobooks too, and podcasts and stuff like that. Our brains can only absorb like a certain amount of information, um, at any given time. Like the first time we learn something, we only learn about 20% of what has been put in front of us. That's mm -hmm. why we've done something really unique with laying the foundation. You know, we want to make it a resource tool for people to go back to over and over again, because we realize that, you know, in, in a 12 week period, assuming you go through the entire program, if we close it down after that, you're probably not going to get all the value that could potentially be given to you in that program, because you've only garnered 20% of what you could possibly learn. So we created this program that could be used as a reference tool 
So when you want to, you can go back and revisit a lesson, go back and dive deeper into something, go back and continue practicing. Because like, as, as you said before, I do say this a lot, that serious business people take their businesses seriously. And you have to do that no matter what kind of business you have, whether it's a creative small business or a jewelry company or a handmade product business, whatever it is. And at the same time, you know, you can have fun with it, uh, taking your business seriously and take it just bit by bit by scooping the cream and implementing as you go. It doesn't have to be this. I think one of the biggest things that I see creative people struggle with the most is that they get down on themselves because maybe they don't get something the first time or it just feels overwhelming because it feels like they have to implement it all at once. But it's really about just taking these baby steps, like little by little implementing it. So I wanted to make sure that I highlighted that you said that because I think that's the most, imp a huge important takeaway with, uh, in addition to creating structure in a business that helps creative people like you, Joelle, really thrive, you know, with structure. Absolutely. Yeah. And it helps yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I've gotten clear, like on why you decided to join laying the foundation. Um, what I really want to know now is how has this newfound structure that you put into your business, how is kind of like showing up for yourself in your business, how is participating in the community and all that stuff? What has been the impact in your business growth? Oh my gosh, so much. Um, I, <clears throat> I love the DI, you know, the DI plus, and I love the coaches and all of it, like the community. It's like so many different creatives and all different types. We're all in it and, you know, supporting each other, like lifting each other mm -hmm. and like there's no competition. It's just like, we're all wherever we are and we're all here to, you know, kind mm -hmm. of help lift each other. And I, I love that. I mean, I don't, I'm an independent, you know, person working for myself, working by myself, you know, like mm -hmm. most everybody else. And, but I also work well in companies and in groups, you know, group setting. Mm -hmm. So this community kind of gives me like a little bit of that feeling, you know, mm -hmm. especially like with the coaches and stuff, when I need some kind of support or I have a question or, you know, something to like bounce something off of someone. So it's not just me, you know, trying to figure it all yeah. out. I can like bounce it off, which has been like really, really amazing and really priceless. I love that. And how can you, would you mind talking about how your sales have grown? Oh yeah. So, um, like, I think I'm up, up like, like third, 380% for the year and my website sales were up 54% for the year. That is so um, fantastic. In 2021. I'm I so know. proud of you. Oh, yeah. I this made is my stretch goal and, you know, well, Dawn kept posting in our, um, in our business Slack in our company Slack channel about how much you grow. She's like, Oh my gosh, you guys aren't going to believe it. Joelle just passed her stretch, stretch goal today and you know, things are crushing it. And so I think it's really awesome to acknowledge how creating the structure for your, for yourself has really served you in reaching your goals a lot faster because, um, for a lot of people this year was good. And for a lot of people, it wasn't as good because I think a lot, there were many makers who were kind of riding on the coattails of having an awesome year in 2020. Like they really had their best year ever. And some people, I think that some people rested on their coattails and then didn't have necessarily as good of a year this year uh, in 2021 or this last year, I should say. And so I really want to commend anyone who really leaned in to keep growing in 2021, because that is, uh, and, and this year in 2022, because um, there is so much uh, potential and opportunity for growth still, no matter what you might be thinking internally about what's going on in the world and stuff like that, people are buying and they are, they want to support small business. And I, I want to keep reiterating that too. Absolutely. I'm super stoked about 2022. You are? Like your goals. Oh yeah. I'd like, Tell me about that. Yeah. Oh my God. I, so I did my whole year goal plan and I did my increases and like, I always have like a super stretch 
Yeah. And my super stretch is like a 50% increase on last year. Great. And I'm just super stoked. You know, I'm working my, my, my quarters. I did a snail mail. Like I think Robin is the one that always like says, you guys should send out snail mail yep. to your customers, like more wholesale, but I'm doing it to my retail customers. Yeah. You know, it's a great idea. <laughs> really beautiful postcards. Happy new year. My top 50 I'm sending out these custom fortune cookies. They're like chocolate dipped with my logo, elephant logo and little sprinkles and like a mess custom messages inside. And, um, yeah, just fun, you know, right. I mean, it's like my top 50, but really they may not have spent all like, you know, high dollar spending. Some of them, you know, some of them have been like following me through my, like my yoga journey, you know, my yoga jewelry journey and they're fans of what I'm doing now. And, um, so maybe that could be like a little push, you know, to, yep. to jump over and, 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 um, get something custom made for them for their, you know, in their Vedic, Vedic jewelry. I love it. So I'm doing things like that. And I just started working on my, like a, like a trifold, you know, um, yes. car, like a brochure, like, yeah. like a brochure, but, but like really pretty, you know, I'm thinking I was going to do it for a second quarter. I'm like, <gasps> no, maybe this will be my fourth quarter when I come up with like a really great, you know, whatever. So I'm just like super stuff. Like I love all of the, like all that back end stuff, as well as doing all the custom stuff that I'm doing for people. It's so and then, amazing. And then growing into my own like signature collection on my website. So I'm so proud it's, of I'm you. still growing and learning. And I, I feel like I have so much to learn. There's, there's a lot that I know, but there's, a lot that I still need to learn. And it's just about, you know, time and space catching up and then, um, and then implementing, you know, at that, at, you know, and trying not to get like too frustrated or, you know, too ahead of myself, but just, just flow with it, you know? So it's super exciting. I'm like totally so stoked for this year. <laughs> so great. So what would you tell someone who was on the fence about joining Lane, the foundation? Oh my God. Don't even think about it. Just do it. You, you want to fly. This program totally gives you the structure and the foundation to fly. If that's what, if you want to fly, you know, and really just excel and, and, and live your potential, live your, like live your best life, you know, and doing what you love to do. I love it. I love it. So great. Joelle, thanks so much for being here today. Where can everyone find you if they want to stalk you on social media or find your website? At Darshan underscore sacred jewelry. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here today. Wasn't that an awesome interview with Joelle? Well, if you want to go say hi to her, make sure that you go find her on social media and tell her what you thought about this interview and give a girl some love. Also, if you would like some help creating some structure in your jewelry business, or other product-based business, I would love to help you. I'm hosting a brand new free masterclass called the top five traits of a six-figure jewelry brand. And you are absolutely going to love it. So if you'd like more information about that and you'd like to join us, head on over to flourishthriveacademy.com forward slash six figures. That's the number six and the word figures. And we'll take you right there. You can RSVP and save your spot today. Thanks so much. This is Tracy Matthews signing off until next time.